So what advice do you have for somebody who wants to teach this music, for somebody who wants to be a music educator and go on and do what all of our wonderful directors do? You gotta love kids. You know, that's the bottom line foundation. You have to love them. And you have to want to teach them enough for you to continue to learn about the meaning in it. The most important thing you can teach kids if you're a director is the meaning of the thing that you're teaching. What is the meaning of this? What's the meaning of it? It's not to be like a robot and play a part and come and win some competition, meaningless competition. What's the meaning of this? And I think if you love kids, you have that feeling for them, like many of your directors definitely have that and have given so much. I'm gonna even say many. To get to this point, all have to have it. I think for many of us, our tradition comes from a tradition that you're in right now when I think about Winton. And, and many of us from New Orleans of our generation, we all study with his dad and with the whole community of New Orleans, in fact, and they all played with us. So every, every band director who influenced me sat down and played with me. And that's a very important thing. So when I look at your band directors, I, I suspect that all of them, and I've been to many of the schools when I think about it, they've sat down and invested a tremendous amount of time and love beyond the nine to five. I know a lot of you guys get together at seven in the morning to rehearse. You all rehearse at eight o'clock at night. You all do it by any means necessary. And if you're gonna be a music educator, you gotta realize it's 365, 12, 24, seven, to the smallest part of it that you can possibly give to. You always on call to your students. You know, so, and, and the greatest amount of teaching happens after hours, not within the hours, but beyond that particular time that you're obligated by some school district or institution or something like that. And also it's in the quality of music you want, you get your students to play. Those the things the kids want to play this. Hey, okay, I, I want to eat candy. I don't want to eat food at all. I want to be on my phone for five hours. I, I don't want to study this stuff. I want to get on the computer. Somebody got to be an adult. If you're the teacher, you're the adult. So I think that's another important component is quality of music. And you want your students to be inspired to strive for the very highest possible level. I had a teacher in high school named George Jansen. He passed away. He was my private trumpet teacher. What could I say about him? He had, a, he had had a stroke, so it's very difficult to hear him when he talked. And he lost the ability to play. But if I would play America the Beautiful in my lesson, you got to imagine it's just me and him sitting in some room in Loyola University. I would play America the Beautiful. He would stand up and put his hand on his chest. That's how serious he was. He would conduct me playing some cornet solo. <laughs> and I have to laugh thinking about it. <laughs> the bride of the wave or something. You think he was in the Carnegie Hall conducting somebody. Once again, I would just think, does he know that this is like 11.30 on Saturday? But now I'm 54 years old, and I'm thinking right now <laughs> about Mr. Jansen and the vibration he was on about excellence. So that's important to have that feeling towards your students. Yes, I like you. Yes, I'm cool with you. Come here with this work next week. That's also a component of it. You know, the level you set for them. Set a high level, set a high bar. And that's, that, that indicates a level of love too. And, and also consistency, because Mr. Jansen did that 11 o'clock on Sunday, but then I actually played one of his other bands. And when we played Stars and Stripes and Forever, when he got to the last course, he turned around and saluted the audience. So he was consistent. <laughs> that was him, you know, so he was for real. <laughs>